All right, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna dive right into player movement and the platform movement. And then the video after this, we're probably gonna take care of the random spawning of the platform and start making um, some stuff happen. All right, so let's get right into it. So inside my script folder, I'm just gonna right click in here and create um, script. I'm gonna call this one player movement. And just double click to open it up. It's processing. I'm not sure why it takes so long. It's just kind of <laughs> hanging there. Reload. All right. Looks like we're good. All right. So in player movement, we're gonna need a couple of things now this is not going to be like a traditional way of doing it but we're going to run through it and we're going to make it work i don't need the start function so i'm going to get rid of that the first thing i'm going to need is i'm going to set three specific points one here one there one there of which the player can move and just toggle through them with like a position or yeah a positions of array all right and what that means stick around to find out first variable is going to be private it's going to be an integer i'm going to call it post and set it to one because i'm going to i'm going to make the middle one left zero and then the right two um next i'm going to create a private vector three which is going to be our current position I'm just gonna using it to keep track of our current position All right and then this will be public because I'm gonna kind of show it to you and this you could hard code in it doesn't have to be public but I'm gonna make it public so we can kind of like adjust it you know right so um, post next post so the point that we're gonna go to next all right so first thing is first the transform of this position or so this object's position is gonna equal to the current position so whenever we modify the current position that's how we're gonna change the player's position if you don't know what transform is every object that exists in 3d space has a transform in 3D space, when something exists, it needs three things. It needs a position, a rotation, and a size. Duh. Computer doesn't know how to generate it. It doesn't know which way it's facing. It doesn't know how big it is. It doesn't know which way it's, where it's located. That's why we need a location. So the, position know, so the computer knows to put it right here. The computer needs to know which way is it facing. Is it like this? Is it like this, you know? And then once it knows all that, it still needs to know the size. So all three of these must exist on a player so the computer can render it or generate it inside Unity. Even an empty object has it. Because an empty exists inside Unity as well. If I click it here, it's, it's in there. It's a child though. So that is what a transform is. So we're just telling that the transform dot position, so now we're targeting the position specifically, is going to be <clears throat> what our current position is. All right. A little off the, you know, off the side note there. Let's continue. All right. So if statements, you guys know how this works. You give a condition. So we're going to say if, you know, the input, and we're going to get the key i like to get the key up for this one what key you can just tell it key code in this sense dot uh let's say right arrow right right arrow boom so if we're using one condition uh, or one command after the condition we can type it here and we're good let's see we're going to be having more than one uh, commands to trigger or fire off when this condition is met we need the body usually you won't need the body for just one command afterwards so if I just type in you know like post plus plus and I'm done 
I won't need the curly brakes. It automatically knows to do the next thing and nothing else, right? But I will need the curly race because I'm doing more than one. Right. Um, so in here, uh, what I'm going to do is let the position, the post index, the integer number that I made up here. It's going to increase it by one every time I press right. But um, I don't want it to go over two. So we'll set a quick uh, uh, if statement instead of an if statement that if it is. Uh, less than two. And there's only one command, so I don't need the curly braces. Wow, my chair is loud. If it's less than two, do this. You know? So it's never gonna go over the uh, the two, but it can become two. Make sense? So left arrow now, uh, same deal, but if it's more than zero, we're gonna decrease it until it is zero. So minus minus and plus plus you get it. It does exactly what it does. Uh, it just adds one. You can say plus equal one, plus minus one, whatever. I'm just doing plus plus. And so within the same body of update, which hi which happens every frame, I'm gonna go ahead and now just check with post. So if statement if post equals zero. So we're using the arrows to change post number. So now if it's zero, we just send it to the first position, second position, or third position. So this array of position, we're just gonna tell it, well, go to the... Hey guys, uh, wow. <laughs> so after I was done, I realized that the recording had cut off for some reason. So, um, just kinda wanted to show you that I finished this code and I did the second one which was really simple and uh, you kind of missed it so let me go through it real quick <laughs> okay so uh, where would you we left off um, you guys know what the update function do it's fired off every frame so every every single frame we're updating the position of the player to the current position so we have these simple commands here, these two if statements uh, conditions here with uh, just a one liner command. That's just saying that if we press the left arrow or if we press the right arrow, we're just decreasing or increasing or decreasing the post number. So this number, which starts at one, we're setting it to zero, to one, or to two. When we, when we press left, it goes to zero. When we press right, it goes back to one. If we press right again, it goes to two. If we press left, it goes to one. It just it doesn't go any lower than zero. It doesn't go any higher um, than two. And that's why we have these other conditions. Cool. And then apart from that, down here now, we simply made a condition that says, well, now that we're controlling this number with our fingers and left and right arrow, we can just tell the position to go to another position based on this number. So if the number is zero, we go to the position. The current position will be the first index of positions in this vector three array, which is right here. Okay. We simply made three elements. Um, we tell it the first one will be negative three. And the middle will be a zero, and the last one will be three. So when this is zero, we set it to negative three. When it's one, we set it to zero. And when it's two, we set it, set it to two. So element zero, element one, element two. You see this? Element zero, element one, element two. Makes sense. All right, and then um, before the recorded, <clears throat> after the recording also cut off, I created a player uh, platform movement script. I call it Plat Move, with just added two lines of code in there. One that destroy the game object after 10 seconds, and one that overall moves the player backwards. Right. 
transform that position. And let me just give you a quick rundown on, on this. You cannot say transform um, dot. Wow. You cannot say transform that position um, and equal something. You can't do that. Because that will mean you went from going from PPP to oh. Right? If you say this position equals this position, remember this in your future encoding. You're teleporting from this position to this position. As soon as this position equals this position, it's saying this position is now this position. So boom, it happens. It teleports, right? That's why I use the plus equal and then the position I want it to go to. Right? So then you have this. It's you keep your current position and it adds the new position so this happens it moves to the new position and that's just one thing I want to point out for you and give you that visual that visual kind of wow my chair squeaks <laughs> that visual um, you know on, on what I'm saying and uh, vector 3 dot back just a quicker way to isolate um, you can see here in the um, in the IntelliSense that pops up it's a shorthand for writing vector 3 0 comma 0 comma negative 1 okay 1 would be forward negative 1 is basically what I wrote here and I'm times in that by the delta time and then I'm times in that by an extra value which I put 10 just to make it happen a little bit faster right so with that script on the platform and then the movement script on the player this should be our result the platform is all the way over there and it's moving by itself coming this way then after about 10 seconds it should delete itself Boom, and it's gone and that's very important that it deletes itself because after it passes the camera you see where the camera is right over here it comes from here goes this way after it passes the camera it's out of bounds I don't need it in the game anymore but it will cons it will continue to exist and carry on into 3d space endlessly using up my resources and the resources of whoever is going to play your game so keep them in mind the players that play your game you don't want to burn out their systems delete stuff destroy stuff clean up the trash that you're not using in your game very important even though i didn't teach you the best coding practice today with with what i did here um <laughs> and i'm actually going to do some more of this public uh, location kind of thing but we're gonna use transform for the next one all right but even though I didn't teach you the best code in practice at least have the best code in uh, mindset and logical thinking again thanks for watching stay tuned for the next video we're gonna do a random spawning of these platforms and we're gonna use a similar method that we use today with the positioning to specify three possible locations that would land right underneath this dropper and uh, make sure that the spawning of those is random all right see you soon bye, bye hey you should become a part of this positive and educational channel by hitting that subscribe button again thank you for watching have a great day